Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Siegel SE 14325. Surface mount deadbolt. Uh, a variety of parts here to show you, and I'd like to show them to you all at once. All at once. Here they are. <laughs> one at a time, I'd like to show them to you. One at a time. Okay, so the business end of this lock first. Here it is. The SE14325 is called a single cylinder slam lock with an angle strike in, in uh, brushed brass. Kind of bronze color too. Okay, that's the lock body. SE14325 stands for single cylinder slam lock. It's a single cylinder because the inside, this obviously is on the inside, is a thumb turn and not a key, which you can also get this in a key double cylinder version as well. S slam lock means that it's got that strike plate with the fingers on it. means that it's auto relocking so that when you push the door closed, it's locked again versus the other type of deadbolt from Siegel that you actually have to turn it on the inside either with the thumb turn or uh, or with the key you would uh, you, you know you retract that with that thumb turn or the key cylinder so uh, moving on now to the strike this is an angle sort of strike that gets mortised to the frame and you can see that you've got these fingers there so to speak and that's what locks this all up real nice and tight for you it's going to look like it's going to look like that when it's done with the locked solidly in place. Okay, I'm going to remove the strike from there to give you a better idea of this. Let's go over this dimensionally at this time. Three inch tall. Got about a seven sixteenths width on the strike. Pardon me, not 7 sixteenths, closer to 13 sixteenths. Overall length of this leg, about an inch, inch and a half, inch and nine sixteenths. Okay, projection on the fingers of that, about an inch and five sixteenths as well. Okay, you're going to have a back plate for mounting uh, the uh, exterior cylinder to, and I'll show you that in a moment. Speaking of the exterior cylinder, you're going to get the exterior cylinder, Siegel, in a complementary finish, two keys, nice and smooth operation on that. The screws and the tailpiece, okay, are included. You've got a cylinder collar. Should have had that removed from the packaging, I apologize. It'll look like that on the outside. You're going to have a plate, which you will likely not use, or you can if you want, but you likely won't use it, and I'll show you why in a minute. That would be to hold it like this through the door, which is the function of that back plate as well. Okay, so you can use the back plate for that, which goes underneath the lock body itself, so it looks like that. Screws for everything. Screws to attach the strike, which is the smaller package. You're going to have screws to attach the lock body as well. The longer ones are for that lock body. You've got more screws here than you really need is the bottom line. Um, the lock body itself features a hold back. That's spring loaded. So in order to open up the front door, or whatever door you have this on, garage door, side door, basement door, You've got to turn the spring-loaded latch and open the door. You can also, if you're, let's say, coming in and out with groceries and you don't want to leave the door open because it's the middle of winter, you've got a holdback feature on it, which is this little pin. And all I did there was turn the thumb turn and then depress the pin, and it holds it retracted so that you can just, you know, come and go until you pull the pin out. And you watch the latches here. Watch these. Okay. That relocks it. Automatic holdback feature. There is a link below this video to the instructions, and let's go over it now. 
I've installed these locks several times. They work fantastic. They're easy to install. Uh, if you're a locksmith who makes a living installing these after you do the first few, you're a pro at that point. If you're a homeowner, jump in and do it. It's not a big deal. If you've got time on your hands, you can make the installation look superb. So link to the instructions are below here. Step one, we're going to go through these bottom steps here. Well, okay, let's back up. Tools you're going to need. Center punch, that's really important. That's the first tool. A hammer, yes, you'd need a hammer. Inch and three-eighths hole saw, you can't do the job without that, so make sure you've got it. Obviously a drill bit, an, uh, an electric drill, an eighth-inch drill bit to pre-drill the holes for the screws, slotted screwdriver, which you do not need. You only need a Phillips screwdriver. Pliers and a hacksaw, you'll need those. Straight edge and a level and masking tape. Mm, masking tape, probably live without. Straight edge and a level are a good idea as well. Um, the center punch, you're going to need that because you want to, once you locate the holes for the screws, you're going to want to center punch them. Because you know when the, you start to drill into the wood or metal, or probably wood is what you're drilling, that drill bit has a tendency to walk a little bit before it pierces through, and you don't want that at all. Because if the lock body or the strike are slightly misaligned, even by that small margin, it will compromise how smoothly the lock works. So use a center punch to mark your holes. That hammer, um, you know, is used for the center punch. You know, uh, there are companies that make automatic center punches, which I like a lot. You put it on there and you push it and it it uh, gives it a, I'm not sure the proper term to call it, but makes your hole. Or just a center punch and a, and a hammer. Even if you had a nail, that could work as well. Um, just so long as the, the tip of the drill bit knows where it's going into. Okay, now moving forward with, now we've talked about the center uh, punch. Y you know, as long as you get the holes marked, you don't want your drill bit to fall out of that area where you've created the center punch. Um, inch and an eighth hole, uh, the eighth inch drill bit they refer to is you're going to pre-drill all of these holes. You don't want to try to run those screws in without pre-drilling the holes. The inch and three-eighths hole saw is going to be specifically for allowing the provision of this rim cylinder to go through the door. Okay. Um, screwdriver, obviously, for putting the screws in. Pliers and a hacksaw. What they're saying there is down below this, you've got to modify the length of the tailpiece and the screws based on your door thickness. This material comes long so that you can get it installed into quite thick doors, like up to in, uh, two and three eighths thick doors. Now that's kind of unusual, but two and a quarter inch thick doors aren't all that unusual to have. So you're going to need to refer to the chart here based on how far they want you to cut the tail pieces and the screws. Inch and three quarters, obviously the most common. So you're going to cut your tailpiece down to the B line, which is the middle line per it's the middle line right there at the very, un, it's the middle line. You can see there are three lines or it's the middle one. Okay. Then your Y on the screws, your Y break. There are two breaks in the screws and as I'm unthreading it from here, you would break it off right at the first break here. So it's very easy. They want pliers and a hacksaw, um, you're going to want to carefully cut these screws down and the tailpiece. You know, when I do it, I, I put the material into a vise, uh, something very, you know, you can't just take pliers and snap that off. You're going to want to cut it carefully. The tailpiece has got to maintain being very, very straight, okay? It's got to be perfectly straight uh, so, that you're, so that it works correctly. Now moving on to the template, steps one through four down here at the bottom. Okay. Step one is going to be attaching the, the template that is included, and it's here. Okay. Depending on the hand of the door, obviously the center portion is the edge of the door, and attaching it as they show here, oh, that's where the masking tape comes in, forgive me, holding the template to the door, you're going to want to cut that and get it attached to the door. And then your center punch, you're going to mark the four holes that are here along with marking the hole for the uh, 
um, rim cylinder to go through the door. Mark your holes, then you'll start to drill. You'll drill your inch and three eighths hole through the door per step three. And when I do that, I like to, you're not gonna drill an inch and three eighths hole through the door of the hole saw. You'll tear out the other side. You'll wanna drill it from both sides and make it neat uh, is definitely what you'll wanna do. Uh, when I do this, I like to uh, drill um, through the door halfway, transpose my dimensions to the other side of the door, but be careful if your door is beveled, that could be problematic. Account for the bevel, meaning if you're measuring on the push, the pull side of the door, which is typically the, which would be the larger side of the door if it's beveled, uh, take into account your, you know, three thirty seconds of an inch if you try to transpose that to the small side of the door, which is typically the push side, okay? Keep that in mind come through with your inch and three eighths on the other side. Step five is to modify your tailpiece and your screw length. Step six is to install the rim cylinder and it shows in step seven to use the back plate. There it is. It was just here. Uh, get that all installed onto the door. Okay, now your installation is looking good and you've of course got the cylinder uh, collar that's here. Step eight, attach the door, the lock to the door. Only put in one or two screws, uh, two screws, okay? Then get your strike mortised to the frame. It's gotta line up with everything there and it's gotta be mortised, mortised, not surface mounted. So you'll wanna take time and chisel out your frame to accomplish, accommodate this. Pr uh, use your center punch, mark your holes, pre-drill your holes, attach the strike. You've only put two screws in here and leave them a little loose just to ensure nice operation. Okay, and once you know you've got really good operation, put the rest of the screws in. At that point, you're, you're, you're set is the bottom line. You're, you're, all, you're all set to go on the installation of this. And you can see that once you go through all those steps that you get to a point where you've done it a couple of times especially if you're someone who is in, it makes a living installing these locks. After that, you're gonna be an expert at it. And, and, and what's really great about these locks is, like I said, uh, well, like I've said uh, in other videos, these Siegel locks, they're known to last a lifetime. They really are. Um, and they're just, they're just a really nice product. Um, Siegel makes the strikes available separately, okay, so that you can buy those. You know, should you have need for a strike only. Again, available in a single cylinder and a double cylinder. Um, and other colors. Brushed brass is not uncommon, but this is the standard classic color, that's for sure. Even heard rumor that oil rub bronze would be available, um, although I don't believe it's available at this point. Uh, this little tab just reveals the um, tailpiece in the back. Oh, you know, and the other thing is, before you get everything set down, Make sure that you've got proper operation from both sides of the door. You're going to want to make sure that you can, you know, uh, get the operation of this when the key is both. You're going to want to make sure that you'll be able to turn the key, retract the latch bolt, and then, of course, you know, remove the key. You're going to want to make sure you've got proper operation on that. And that's why the tailpiece is vertical on this. You, you know, may not have noticed that, but that's unusual or the less common way for a rim cylinder to be oriented with the tailpiece vertically. And that's because this is a slam lock. It's a spring-loaded situation. You'll put the key in, you'll turn it you know, to the right or left, retract the latch, and then you're done. That's just how these work. And you want to make sure that the timing of that on the inside is such that it works because you can rotate that cam op uh, assembly on the inside. You, know, you can rotate it 180 degrees before it'll do anything and you're going to want to make sure that you've got it um, timed correctly. I don't think I've uh, missed anything too uh, important, and I've probably said several things twice. If you have any questions on the Siegel SE14325 single-cylinder slam lock or any other Siegel product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.